Hi, Tim Yao here, Community Pioneer in Roundhouse Park and Cringleford, and welcome to this week's Assembly. Well, this week I want to talk about Lent. Now, Lent's a funny old word, and it comes from an old English word which had Germanic roots, which means the lengthening of days, because Lent is a period when we move away from winter and the cold and snowy and dark nights towards springtime when it starts to get lighter and things, flowers start to blossom and shoots start to come through. And so the Christian church adopted that idea of, of the lengthening and it became Lent. And Lent is remembered for those 40 days before Easter. So Easter and Lent are linked together. Um, Lent is a time of spiritual preparation getting ready. Now I know all of us have to get prepared. It's been a long time since some of you were in school or it might feel a long time but I want to talk about preparation. How do you prepare to get ready for school? Now I know for a lot of you at the moment getting ready for school is quite simple. You get out of bed, you put some clothes on if you remember, you eat your breakfast and then you go on the laptop or the tablet or whatever and you log on to homeschooling. But I want to take you back to when you were actually at school. Do you remember that in the good old days where well, you had to wear a uniform? So let's imagine you're getting ready for school. You've got your uniform ready, your shoes are shined and then you've got to pack your bag. Now I've got a bag today and it's full of things. Now I've got five things in my bag, five things, and I want you to guess what five things have I put in my bag to get ready for school. Now these are things that you will probably pack as well. Uh, in the moment I'm going to pause the video, I want you to pause the video, whoever's in charge of the computer, and I want you to have a guess what you think is in this bag. Are you ready? I'm going to count down, three, two, one, and pause. Well, welcome back and I hope you've got some good answers. So let's look what I've got in my school bag to get prepared for school. Well, the first thing I've got is, let's have a look, are my trainers for my PE kit because you know at school you do your PE and some of you are missing that at home, like playing games with other people. So when you get back, you'll be able to do some running around, play some games and sports. So I've got my PE kit. Second thing I've got in my bag, let's have a look, is a snack. I don't know what you like to take for a snack at school. I've got my apples here, mm, munchy, crunchy apples. Maybe you like to take something else. Some of you get snacks at school, but I brought a snack. So that's number two is a snack. Let's have a look at my next thing. Oh, of course, a water bottle. You know, remember, stay hydrated. Keep your brain healthy by drinking lots of water. Glug, glug, glug. Hope you got your water bottles ready and hope you're drinking lots of fresh water at home. So that's number three. Number four, what have we got here is a pencil case. Yep, with all my stationery, pens, pencils, rulers, everything you need to do your schooling and to your uh, getting ready for school. Okay, number five, are you ready? Here goes. Number five is my lightsaber. Yay, defending the school holding back evil. That's what a lightsaber, everyone takes a lightsaber at school, don't they? Don't they? No, of course they don't. But you know that I love Star Wars. And if I was going to school, I would take my lightsaber. But I know you probably don't have one. And if you've got one, you sh probably shouldn't take it to school. So that's probably why I'm not at school. So that's my number five is my lightsaber. I wonder what you would take to school if you had the chance. You know, in life, it's important to get prepared. If you're an athlete, you know, you have to get ready for your event. If you're a runner, you've got to do lots of training, eat the right food, get ready physically and mentally. You have to be prepared. If you're getting ready for a test at school, you've got to learn your facts, learn your stuff. So when you sit down and have to do that test, you've got to be prepared and have it all up here. If you're going on holiday, you need to pack your bags, don't you? You need to be prepared. You need to fill it with all the things that you're going to need when you take away. Because once you get there, you won't have them. Well, in the same way, Jesus got prepared in his life. And then the Holy Spirit led Jesus out into the wilderness. The wilderness is the wild places away from uh, villages and towns. 
a place where there was wild animals. That's a wolf, just in case you didn't know. Jackals, mountain lions, maybe even bears, I don't know. But it's a wild place. There's no shops, nowhere you can pop out for a cheeky burger. There are no, uh, no place you can just turn the tap and get yourself a drink. It's a place where you had to learn how to survive. Now, the thing about the wild places is they're a difficult place to live. I once had the uh, opportunity to go into a desert. Now, not the same place that Jesus went to. This was the Arabian desert. And it was hard to get there. It was a long journey in a car and we were driving and Jesus obviously would have walked. We finally got there. It was a hot day, sweltering out there, sun beaming down, no clouds in the sky. We got there and then it was dusk and the sun began to set. And you know what struck me immediately was it started to get very cold. Even though it was such a hot place, it was so cold. But the other thing, the most, the memory that stays with me most is the emptiness, the isolation and the silence. So quiet. No creatures, no traffic noises, just silence. Now, thankfully, I could get back in the car and drive away and go back to where I was staying. But you want you to imagine what it would have been like for Jesus. Away from all those worldly distractions, all those home comforts on his own in a wild place, blistering hot during the day and cold at night. Now, I'm going to show you a little video. It goes on for about three, three or so minutes. And it's some illustrations by a guy called Simon Cross. You might have seen them before. As you watch this video, I want you to imagine what it would have been like for Jesus being in that wild place. And as you're thinking about that, I want you to imagine what it'd be like for you. If you were in a wild place like that, how would you survive? What would you do? How would you cope being away from everybody, away from your family, away from your friends, away from your school? And think about not eating, not eating for 40 days. Wow. Well, we're going to watch this video now. I hope you enjoy it.
Well, welcome back. I hope you enjoyed that. And I wonder what thoughts or emotions came up in you when you're thinking about that, that, that place of being silent and hungry and, and hot. Oh, there's heat and the cold. Now, that video doesn't end where it should. And later on during Lent, uh, you can hear more about the story of what happened to Jesus in that wild places. But today I just want to focus on that preparation time. So here we are in the desert, in the wild place. You can see the rocky outcrops. There's very little vegetation. It's arid and dry. It's a difficult place to survive. One of the things uh, Christians do during Lent is remember that time of Jesus being in that wild place. And just as he dealt with silence and hunger and he had to deny himself some of the creature comforts of life, uh, Christians around the world do the same thing. They either uh, they can devote themselves to God in prayer, maybe reading the Bible. They give up things. They deny things. Uh, the word that often people think of is fasting. Uh, they are kind of giving up stuff and they also become active in other different ways. You know, fasting is is not about punishing yourself. It's not about trying to go, ooh, ah, ee, ooh, I want to suffer. Ah, ah. It's not that. It's about making space, about getting rid of distractions, just as Jesus got rid of all those earthly distractions uh, by moving to that wild place. We can't necessarily go to the, the wilderness, but we can remove distractions in our life so we can get focused. Uh, people do that by lots of ways, but one of them is fasting. Fasting is you can do a partial fast where people give up maybe some sweets or meat or something like that for those 40 days to kind of show their devotion. Or they can do a complete fast. Some people like won't eat for a day or, or won't eat lunches or, or something that kind of give up food for a period of time. And that's that's quite difficult to do. Um, also, people fast other things that might uh, kind of fast watching tv or playing on the computer or or something they really enjoy they do it to 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 kind of get rid of that distraction for a while for those 40 days to say for this time i'm not going to do that and instead i'm going to do something else and it's that something else which is important like i said people might read the bible uh they might kind of try other devo prayerful devotional things. They might read a book about Lent, to kind of get them focused. They think about Jesus and his life, uh, just as when you were watching that video, you kind of thought about what it must have been like. But also they take up acts as well. They do things that are positive, loving acts. They might want to raise money for a charity or go and help a neighbour or pick a favourite charity to support or you know do something with their actions uh, to, to show God how devoted they are. You know, through this time of Lent, it's a time of self-disciplining, devotion, and it's about, I think, heavenly actions over earthly distractions. What if you could say that with me? Heavenly actions over earthly distractions. Now, you might never have tried doing anything for Lent before. And if you want to, talk to your parents and carers and ask them what things you might do. I mean, just don't, I mean, what I'm saying is just don't stop eating because it's important that you eat. You know, when you're young, you need to make sure you stay well nourished and things like that. But maybe you might want to give something up in particular, or maybe you might want to go and help somebody over this Lent period to kind of show your focus. Or maybe you might even want to try reading the Bible. You know, talk to your parents and carers, come up with a plan and see how you get on. Well, look, whatever you do, I pray that you'll do it and it'll be a time of growth, a self-reflection, of uh, kind of get, driving into what God is all about and finding out about God for yourself. You know, I'm going to say a prayer now. And if you want to join with me, you can bow your head and pray this prayer with me. And if you if you agree with it, you can say amen at the end. So let's pray. Dear Lord. Thank you that in the busyness of life, there are times to stop and to think. Help us never be too busy that we don't have time to be peaceful and silent. Thank you for times such as Lent that remind us to think about you and to consider what we can do to help those less fortunate than we are. Please help us be prepared to help other people. Amen. Well, that's it for your assembly today. And over the Lent period, you're going to be finding out more about it. But if I don't see you soon, I'll see you next time.
Bye.